Steve Ray, what is the seventh unknown sorrow of Mary? This this is fun doing this with you, Terry. Um, I enjoy it. I'm going to read a passage to you. Great from Mark chapter three. Yep. A great crowd followed Jesus from Galilee to Judea, Jerusalem, and Idumea from beyond Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. That means people coming from Gentiles, not just Jews. The correct crowd, when the great crowd heard of all he was doing, they came to him. He told his disciples to get the boat ready for him because he was surrounded by diseased people, lepers, Gentiles, Mm -hmm. and Jews. He's not sleeping. He's not eating. He's not taking care of himself because he's so compassionate to these people. And he said, when he went home, the crowd gathered even around him. So he could not eat. And Mm -hmm. when his family heard about it, they went out to seize him for they are saying he is out of his mind. That that. is the Greek word meaning demented or insane. Exactly. Mad. He's gone mad. (laughs) Lunatic, you know? So his mother hears this in Nazareth, which is a day's walk away. So she has to leave Nazareth with some of the family and they walk all the way down to see what to try and save him from whatever's happening. And she can't even get to him. Hmm. Jesus was touching lepers, mingling with Gentiles, not eating, not sleeping. And his mother and relatives came and were standing outside. They couldn't even get in to see him. Here's another sorrow of Mary. Her son, she knows how compassionate he is, that he can't say no to anyone. And so all of these people are there, and he's he's depriving his own self of sleep and eating and food of all of these things because he's healing and listening to people and touching a lepers. You're not supposed to touch lepers. And he reaches out and touches them and Gentiles, you can't touch Gentiles or, and he's doing. So this was another sorrow of Mary to hear that Jesus has lost his mind and she goes down to help him and can't even do it and sees him being abused by the crowds. Yeah, that would be. Ooh, never thought of that. Sorrow number seven. Yeah. Okay. Number eight. Um, this is, you don't, this is also a glorious mystery. Mm -hmm. The ascension of Jesus into heaven. Oh man, my son gets to go back up and be with his father in heaven. He's been waiting for this all along. It's no, it's a sad thing. Yes, it's a glorious. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going back up to be with his father in glory. That's why it says he was received into a cloud because clouds in the Bible represent glory, the Holy Spirit, glory. Mm -hmm. He's gone back up into glory again. But what also happened is the mother just lost her son. That's a good point. Yeah. That's his physical body. Mm -hmm. His physical body is made up of her DNA. Yeah. Jesus has Mary's genetic code. Even in heaven today, seated at the right hand of God, he still has Mary's genetic code. Mm -hmm. And that is the body, the boy that she raised from a little guy. She still, any mother knows how sad it is if her son says, I'm going to go and you won't ever see me again. But she, for three months, they breastfeed there. So all of his brain cells, his muscles, his bones all came from her, her little boy that cuddled and said, mommy, mommy. Now he's going up and she's saying goodbye to him again in another way. And she's not going to see him again in his physical form because he just went up into heaven. Right. Another sorrow of Mary. She wa- she must have watched him ascend with great joy, but also with tears in her eyes as she said, goodbye, son. All righty. Now we're coming to the ninth. We're almost three quarters done. This one, I'll develop it a little bit. At the cross, Mm -hmm. she no longer has a father to take care of her because we know her father and mother were old Mm -hmm. and probably died when she was young, which is why Joseph was given to her at such a young age because she needed a caretaker. (laughs) She doesn't have a... uh, a husband anymore to take care of her. Joseph is dead. She doesn't have her son Jesus anymore because he's been crucified and taken up into heaven. So she's going to be destitute. But Jesus made a plan for her. And he said to John, take care of my mother. And mom, this is now your son. Why? Because Mary didn't have any other sons. If Mary had other sons, she wouldn't, he wouldn't have given her to John. But he said to her, I'm going to give you to John. Well, where did John live? Not in Nazareth. She had to leave her own domicile. Mm -hmm. She was the matron of her own little cab, her own little house there, her cave. Now she has to move down to the big city, Mm. the village of Nazareth with her own house. Now she has to move to the big city of Capernaum. 1500 people live there and she's living in somebody else's house. She's living with John 
but John would also be living with James. James and John, it's extended families. They would have lived together in the same place. Maybe their in maybe uh, their parents Zebedee and Salome were still alive. So Mary moves in with this other family, and she's no longer in charge. She's no longer has her privacy. So this is a sorrow moving into a new situation like that, and in a in a village outside of that, and then. To make and she loses her privacy in a way. I know I, I Janet and I live here together. Our kids are moved out. I like our privacy. Of I course. can't imagine having two other families, James's families and John, and them all move in here. Yeah. Um, she loses her privacy in her own place now, but that's only makes it this this is also part of this um the ninth sorrow is that being living there with John and James. James becomes like her adopted son as well. And in Acts chapter 12, we read, And Herod, king, the king, laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. You might as well say right there, he killed James, the brother of John, and the adopted son of Mary. Mm, yes. So unknown sorrow number nine is really two, leaving her own little house place and going and living with somebody else's family in a big city and having the, the young man, the man you live with, one of the disciples of Jesus have his head cut off and you hear the message. That would have been also a big sorrow for Mary. Right. These make sense, don't they? Yeah, they do. And you know what, Steve, again, I want to encourage our listeners to re-listen to this uh, because you know, the insights of scripture are really profound. And many of these scripture verses you're reading, we've read them, but we never put the connection together. So I just think that yep. this is really important. I think it gives us an insight into Mary. It's kind of like the rosary in, mm -hmm. in the sense that the rosary is thinking through the gospel, right. praying right. the difference. And, and this is a way of thinking through Mary's life. And you would think that because she had given herself to God and said, God, here, I'm going to do this for you, sure. that he would have given her joy and blessings that she wouldn't have any sorrows. A lot of people think, especially evangelical Protestants, that if I become a Christian, I'm going to get rich. I'm going to be happy all the time. And, and it's just not that way. Jesus said, if you follow me, you're going to carry your cross. The world's exactly. going to hate you. You're going to have sorrows. Even Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. And Mary's suffering, she was not immune from suffering, and neither will we be. Well said. Okay, so the next one is the 10th unknown sorrow of Mary, and it's really got two parts to it. One, being the now the adoptive mother of John, and John being having taken her into his right. home, we know that John, after the New Testament, after the gospel era went by, that he moved to Ephesus and became the bishop of Ephesus. And he lived in Ephesus, and it's affirmed by Irenaeus of Lyon and many of the earlies that even had been in Ephesus, that John lived there as bishop, and he took Mary with him. Now, that's over a thousand miles, by the way, wow. that they would have had to travel. <laughs> and if you imagine the conditions of travel back in those <laughs> days— those people that are going to be with you in March are going to be riding in an air-conditioned bus. That's right. I'm taking 130 in a week, and we're going to be on a big cruise ship and air-conditioned buses. <laughs> Mary and John would have had to walk over 1,000 miles. Incredible. So that would be a long journey walking. But what they did is there was like an airport system going on, but it was ships. Yes. That's where we get the word airport. Yep. It was the ports for ships. And many of them, and we know John was shipwrecked four times Wow! because he would get on a ship to go across the Mediterranean to save you time, but they didn't have cruise ships. They, Terrible. you had to rent space on the deck. Wow. So you would rent 10 foot by 10 foot on the <laughs> deck from the ship because underneath the, in there's all full of grain and any rooms that were down there were for the soldiers and the merchants and the seamen. So if I wanted to go say from, Caesarea, which is the capital of Judea at the time where they live, and go up to Ephesus, I would have gone on a ship, yeah. but I would have been on the deck of the ship sleeping. And when it was windy or storming at night, I was out in that. And where do you go to the bathroom when you're yeah. on a ship like that? This is why they call it the head. Yeah. It's the head of the ship. You go sit and you kind of, well, anyway, this is how Mary had to travel. Yeah. And nobody thinks about that.